Well, welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast, the only podcast for dance studio owners, where each week we bring you business growth strategies to help you increase your profits, impact the lives of more students, while ensuring you get back some time to have a little life outside of the studio. It's time for you to become the go-to studio in your area. Now, here's your host, founder of the Dance Studio Owners Association, Clint Salter. Hey there, Dance Studio owners. Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. It's Clint here, and I'm really happy that you're joining us for today's episode because we have a guest today. He's the founder of 123 Get Found. His name's Jared Warner, and he specializes in helping local entrepreneurs, business owners grow and scale their businesses. Whether you're just starting out in your studio, you've been running your studio for decades, Jared and his team are building systems that will get you more students through the doors of your business. He believes to really succeed as a studio owner, you need multiple streams of traffic or multiple ways to get found. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. This is such a popular topic, Jared, for our studio owners because they're always saying to me, the number one question that I always get is, Clint, how do I get more students? And so you're the guy that's going to help us. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. So, Jared, tell us a little bit um, about you. Give us a snapshot uh, of you and the business. What do you guys do? Yeah. So, basically, we use a system that we created called Stealth 2.0. And our system focuses on three things and three things only. And I encourage people to look at their business in this way. So, the first one is getting found. The second one is getting results from getting found. It's not just getting found. You've got to get results from getting found. Otherwise, you're just wasting time, energy, and money. Um, And the third one is getting smart. So getting smart is understanding the analytics of what took place between steps one and two so that you know how to effectively scale. In other words, stop putting money where you're not getting a good ROI and put money more money towards where you are. Makes, makes a lot of sense. So how do we, I want to ask you, you know, when you say like, know where you're putting your money, make sure you're putting it into the right things. How do we know what the right things are and how long do we give something before we deem it working or not working? Can you talk a bit about that? Uh, certainly. Yeah. So, uh, it starts with having proper analytics in place. So you have to know how much traffic you have coming in Mm -hmm. how much money you're spending on that traffic Mm -hmm. and what your total cost per lead is. And then you take that number and put that against your lifetime customer value. Mm -hmm. Um, And these are just basic metrics that you have to know in order to really scale a business. And so I would encourage people to look at when somebody signs up to your dance studio, how long do they stay in at what is the average dollar amount? So maybe you ran a promotion and somebody was there for a year at a discounted rate. Maybe your regular rate is X, but whatever the working average is, and this is easier for owners that have been in business for a little bit longer, they'll have that data or they should be able to. Um, But that's the number that you need to know. And then you uh, put your costs against that. So they're paying your your person pays this much on average, or they're worth this much on average. How is that in relation to your profit and loss? So we could go you know really deep down that rabbit hole, but this is kind of the the basic metrics of how to figure out what's working. And if things are skyrocketing past that figure, you know that you've got uh, an issue either with your targeting. So that's the audience that you're speaking to, your messaging. So that's what you're saying to them or the offer that you're asking them to take you up on. So those are the three things that you would need to work on and adjust. I love what you're saying. And uh, the reason I love it is because you've just talked about really knowing those, those baseline foundation numbers inside of your business. And I think so often I, I've seen it with studio owners that come to us and say, my marketing is not working or what's going on here. And when we dive into their numbers, they don't have clarity around these things that you've talked about around, you know, how many people are hitting their landing page or, you know, uh, opting into their offer or, you know, yeah, visiting their website. And then how many of those people are taking trial classes? How many of them are coming actually into the studio and then enrolling? And then how long are they staying? So I love this because this is something we talk about a lot and you've just confirmed that knowing your numbers really is a, is a huge 
piece of the marketing puzzle. It, it really is. And a lot of people, um, including marketers, by the way, I have this talk with people all the time and say, don't look at just front end conversions. Mm. Because I'll give you an example. I had a, a client who we ran a 30 day free trial. And obviously, the conversions were really big for free 30 days to, to try it out. Yeah. Then we switched it to seven day free trial from 30. Mm -hmm. Big difference, especially to the people who had already seen the 30-day offer. They did not convert on a seven-day offer. If they didn't convert on 30, they definitely didn't convert on seven. But an interesting thing happened. After, uh, after about 14 days, we started getting conversions. We got uh, zero conversions in the first seven days because the audience was made up of a large percentage of people who had already known about a 30-day offer. So they went, oh, forget it. That's seven days. Now I'm, I'm not interested. But the interesting thing happened. And now this offer has been running for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. The people who converted on the seven-day trial were more likely to turn into students than the ones who converted at the 30-day trial. So the business actually made considerably more money and retained more students at the seven-day sign-up. And one of the things that was very interesting is the amount of show-up numbers. So the people who had a 30-day uh, trial, some okay. of them never even showed up because yeah. they felt like they had all the time in the world. And I think back to some offers that I've claimed that had a, a free month. And I'm the same. I've done it for uh, software. And they go, you get a free month. And then we'll extend it for a month if you don't use it. Those are the ones that I've actually literally never signed up for. And going in, it was something that I could uh, use for my business. But they gave me too much time. So yeah. you, you don't want to give so much time that they don't actually even use your product. Yeah, right. There's no, urge there's no urgency there. I've done that too. And I'm like, I'll get to that at the end of the month. You know, right. but if they say to me, I've got X amount of hours or seven days, you know, which is, you know, a week, I'm like, okay, how are we going to use this this week to see if it yep. works? Yeah. And another thing is that can work and it's worth testing, split testing uh, versus the seven day uh -huh. is actually getting some money for a crazy deal. Like, um, and, you know, studio owners have to look at their books and see if this makes sense, but don't judge it without testing it and actually seeing lifetime value. Um, but testing like say six classes for 20 bucks or $19 or $17 or something like that. Um, things like that, that you get them to actually reach for their wallet, pull out their card and test it out. I bet you those would be worth more in the long run, but your conversions will definitely suffer. So it's for somebody who is maybe a little bit skeptical to, to give away the seven days, try that one. But if you, if you have a killer user experience or a, a customer journey experience, when people come to your uh, dance studio, the seven day could work really well because you will get more people in the door. And if you're able to do a really good job and keep them there, I'd probably you know go all in on something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. This is super valuable. Now, you know, your first step is around, uh, you know, getting found. How do we get found? What are you seeing working really well for local kind of brick and mortar businesses when it comes to them being found by their ideal, uh, you know, ideal audience? Yeah. So basically you have two different, uh, two different customer, uh, potential customer bases. So you have one that knows they want dance lessons yeah. either for them or for their kids, those people are searching on Google. So you're going to want to have an effective uh, Google AdWords campaign, mm -hmm. maybe an SEO campaign if your business is financially sound and you can put the time aside to let that work. Don't let uh, an SEO company tell you that you're going to see results next month, especially if you're in a competitive area. You won't. It's not going to happen. It's more like a nine to 12 month long term growth strategy. So if you have to pick one, pick AdWords that will get you to the top of the search engines as long as your account is set up correctly yeah. um, and doing things the right way. So those are the people um, I would call low hanging fruit. They know they want to uh, do business with the dance school, but they don't know which one they're going to do business with. That's what you want to be in front of those people. The next category of people are ones who could be persuaded 
to go, come to your school, but they don't know that yet until there's a proper ad and offer put in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, that type of traffic um, can come from good marketing with Facebook. Yeah, totally. And we're, you know, we're a big fan of, of Facebook, of Facebook marketing and Facebook ads. Uh, a lot of your clients seeing their best return on investment through doing Facebook advertising. Yeah, we, well, we do both. So uh, yeah. it, as long as the business lends itself to um, having people who are searching on a, a fairly regular basis, mm -hmm. we do the Google AdWords and then we'll also convert, uh, we'll do retargeting and try to convert the ones who don't convert. So yeah. uh, that gets a little bit more complicated with audiences um, created on your thank you page versus your landing page. And so if they hit your landing page, but not your thank you page. You remarket them in uh, on Facebook uh, as well as Google properties. Google has 2 million websites that your retargeting ad can show up in. Yeah. So that's, that's a good one as well. Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, that's kind of the, the online piece. What about offline marketing? Are you doing anything offline? Is it worth our studio owners to be, be thinking of offline marketing, you know, to, to bring in ideal customers? I personally would stay away from offline marketing unless you've maxed out your online marketing. And I have not come across a business who has maxed out their online marketing yet. Yeah. Um, there are coupon books and things that uh, can sometimes make attractive offers. Um, tracking is not the best uh, in terms of like retargeting. So uh, like to put it in uh, an online world, it's as if somebody received your coupon, looked through all of it, read it, thought, eh, maybe next month. And then it ends up going in the trash or the recycle or they spill coffee on it and it goes away. They go, whatever. And if you didn't get good results, you're not in that book the next month, then that's gone. You're not going to get that person again. Take that to uh, the online world. And let's say you ran a video on Facebook and you were setting it up properly, which is um, a video view retargeting audience. Uh -huh. You can then drop another reminder. So if these people didn't take you up on your offer, you drop another offer and you can track them again. You don't have that ability in, in uh, the offline world. I mean, you can put a call tracking number, which um, I strongly recommend for any offline or online marketing stuff. Do a yeah. call, uh, call tracking number and you can keep track of the people who did respond. But what about the ones who you, you can't track because they were interested, but you don't know that because they didn't reach out. They didn't come in your business and they didn't call, but they were just interested as they were checking the mail and flipping through that book mm. or driving past your billboard. You can't re-engage those people with offline marketing like you can with online. Yeah. One of the things that I love is, you know, you're talking a lot about retargeting and the importance of the, fo of the follow up, right? Because just because that they've, they've seen a Facebook ad or an offer and they've clicked a button to come in for a trial class, for instance, or, you know, we have a seven day unlimited class pass uh, offer that we teach. I mean, you're really making sure that if they're not taking that up, or they are taking it up that they're, you know, that they're actually going to take the offer and they're going to come into the studio. And so you're, can you kind of talk a little bit more around that, that kind of following up and, and keeping in touch process and how important it is? Definitely. It's super important. And the one thing I will say is before you even run your video ad, you should be creating those audiences and you should already have your follow-up sequence built before you get a single impression on your video mm -hmm. that should be built. And just think of it. And if you're struggling to think of what would you say, what would you do? How would you do it? Just think of if in your video it shouldn't be kind of a conversation you would have if they were in front of you. Like we run the best school in the world. Our students are happy. We've got a low price offer, you know, like whatever you're talking to them about. And then it's as if the person said, okay, I'm interested. And by interested, that means they watched say 50% or more of your video. What would the next thing be that you would say to them? You know, like, would you say, Hey Clint, although you can't call them out, um, by name that that gets into a whole nother TOS yeah. <laughs> issue. But, um, would you say like, you know, Hey, San Diego, you know, um, we, uh, we gave put out this offer and you didn't claim it or, you know, something like that, whatever yeah. your initial offer is, you, 
you just want to take the next steps in the conversation and keep that conversation flowing and, and understand that odds are if they watch 50%, 75%, 95% of your video, they've got to have some level of interest. They're at least worth dropping another message to. And it doesn't have to be video. If you struggle with making videos and stuff or the expense or uh, expertise, if it's an issue in one of those, you can retarget with a, a, just a clean image. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I love this. This stuff is so, I geek out on this stuff. It's so cool. And I'm sure our members are, are, are loving this conversation. One of the ways, uh, Jared, that is really effective for our members to get new students is through word of mouth, right? The old school, a friend tells a friend, tells a friend uh, type of scenario. They're at dinner and a mom says, hey, do you know any dance studios? And they're like, yeah, you should go to Jenny's dance studio. How can we take that principle of, of referrals and word of mouth and I guess amplify it through somehow bringing it into the online space. Sure. So one thing you can do, and this is uh, not necessarily integrating with the, the online world, but uh -huh. you can give a referral commission in some way, whether it's actual, you know, a referral fee or in free lessons, uh, membership credit, something like that that works. I personally do it. And I've done business with people even reluctantly when I said, I do not want the referral fee. I'm sending people to you because I believe in your product service or whatever, and they're a perfect fit. That's why I'm making this introduction. Um, and I was told once a few years ago from somebody, he said, I don't care. And he left the money in an envelope and dropped it at my feet and just walked away and said, I'll see you later. And it worked. Uh, yeah. because he made the person happy that I referred. So that's one piece of it. But here's something really cool that I've been working with to bring them from offline to online. Make your existing students aware of a contest that you're about to create when I tell you what this is. It's called viper.io. And there's a couple other ones, raffle copter off the top of my head. Um, but it's V-Y-P-E-R dot I-O. Uh -huh. This is contest software. So you can give away like something. Uh, the idea is a really big discount that they go, really? So I can win. I can win that. How do I win that? Well, you win that by putting in your name and your email. And then when they do that, they get dropped onto a, a typical thank you page. Although this thank you page incentivizes them to win the contest, but getting more entries to do whatever you want them to do. So the first one would be share the contest. And if they get people to sign up for the contest, they get more entries. It can be join your group. It can be liking your page. It can be um, sharing a post, jumping on your live stream, um, whatever you want them to do. They have a thing called custom entries, so you can literally make it whatever you want. Call and book a private lesson. Um, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You're limited to your imagination because you can, you can fil not to get too complicated, but you can filter it by the answers so that you can, can validate it and, uh, and make sure that they can't game the system that way. So in other words, I, I'm working on one to promote a live event right now and they can get 5,000 points if they buy a VIP ticket. And we've had people that said, yes, I bought a VIP ticket. Our answer is, what was the email address you used to purchase the ticket? Mm -hmm. And we've got some people who did not purchase a VIP ticket. We flagged <laughs> them as cheaters. They drop out and it's done. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can do whatever you want and it, you can run it for whatever time frame you want. So you can do it couple times a year and boost membership and, and ramp it up. And I would say, you know, set the time frame out a month or so, tell all your students as well as social media and, and make a, a fun thing about it. Yeah. I love, I love this. This is, this is so cool and a great way to obviously build your list. And when the competition's done, announce the winner and then maybe offering something to those other people that didn't win like the seven day pass or something to come along and come and try the studio, right? A hundred percent. Yep. And you yeah. can build whatever properties you want. So if you want to build up your page, you want to build up a private group, you want to build your email list, you build um, just from them getting in the contest. So that's just a by default. Um, you build your audiences on Facebook to retarget. Uh, you build whatever you want. 
Yeah. So cool. So cool. Um, I know we're running out of time, Jared. So I want to ask you, you know, you, you working with so many different, uh, business owners, you know, local businesses, what are your three tips? Uh, you can give me four if you want for running a really successful client attraction campaign. So for our studio owners that are wanting, wanting more students, you know, what are the three, if there was only three things or four things they could focus on, you know, what would you say to do? So definitely you need the right audience and usually they're going to be local. So your audience is going to be a radius around. So that part's easy for a studio owner. You're going to want um, a landing page that converts. Don't send them to a regular homepage. Um, if you're running a video ad for kids classes, uh, you're going to want to market to parents only. Um, and you can do that in the settings in uh Facebook and ads manager. Uh And then you're going to want to drop them onto a landing page that only talks about kids classes. That's why they're responding to the video. And then the final thing is you've got to have a good offer. It has to be a good offer. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You could be telling them anything and there's no sense of urgency and there's no reason to act at all and definitely no reason to act now. So uh, six classes for $20, seven day trial for the first 50 people who respond something like that, um, that gives a sense of urgency and is a really good offer. And then definitely in order to make it really work that you can get the full money out of it, you've got to have a system in place where you know that they came in for that offer. It's time to wow them, give it everything you got because you need them to sign on for the long term, and you build that trust in the first, you know, week to first couple months. Mm, perfect perfect i love it jared i could talk to you for a very long time this has been so valuable i'm i'm sure uh studio owners who are listening you've probably got pages and pages of notes i hope this has been really valuable jared where can our studio owners go to find out more about you and what you guys are up to yeah, I've got a free group, um, agencyinyourpocket.com. We'll drop you right into the Facebook group. And actually, some of the stuff we're talking about at, as we record this at 1 p.m. Pacific today, I'm doing a tutorial inside that group on video retargeting. So if you drop in the group, ask for the link, it'll probably be buried by the time this episode airs. I love that. Agency in your pocket. Cool. All right, Jared. Well, thanks again so much uh, for sharing all of your great wisdom. So we're going to get a lot of people jumping over into your group. I know I'm certainly going to be in there. Um, And we look forward to hopefully having you back. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been fun. Awesome. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Clint. Thank you for joining us today. For all the resource links from the show and to receive access to our free dance studio growth training, make sure you visit transformmydancestudio.com.